Hey, so you know when you're on a really amazing, super fast trail and you've just got to take an iPhone shot or maybe a real camera shot of your buddies flying past to just capture that awesome moment? So you do that and you look at the back of your screen and you realize, wow, it looks like that dude was standing still. Well, there are some really, really good reasons for that. And today I'm going to show you guys how to get really fast looking photos and videos from anywhere from using, you know, the big fancy camera that Beth is using right now to even your iPhone slash whatever other phone you use. All right, let's get into it. So today we've got James from Ride BC, our fearless Squamish guide to uh, be our model. And so we're gonna start off doing two different things. One, we're gonna have him go really, really fast. And I'm gonna take a photo as anybody normally would and we'll see how disappointing it looks. And then uh, we're gonna have you go really freaking slow and I'm gonna make it look like he's going warp speed. Let's try it. Let's do it. Okay, so we are on the trail called Pomplamoose, and Pomplamoose is a trail that James actually freaking built, and it's, well, from what I hear, it's amazing. We haven't actually ridden it yet. We're gonna do that later this week. And so we're at one of the fastest parts of the trail. There's a bit of a shoot coming down here, so James is gonna be going at maximum speed right in front of me, and we're just gonna set the camera to auto, let cameras do what cameras do, and see what it looks like. See if it looks like he's going fast. Lion. So we've got the shot on kind of like auto mode. I'll put that. I'll put that on the screen right now. And um, I mean, he was going really fast, but because of the fast shutter speed, it looks like he's standing still. Like there's not a lot of that speed kind of feeling going on. So let's let's try something here. Let's let's have James go really freaking slow. And I'm gonna change a couple settings on my camera. Take control of the camera, and then we'll see if I can make him look go, like he's going really freaking fast. Here we go, folks. This is exciting stuff. Oh my god, I'm in control. Sick. Let's have a look. What a difference a little change in camera settings can make. Holy smokes. And so you can see on the photo that even though James was going really, really slowly, we made him look as though he was going quite a bit faster than in the first photo when he was flying down the trail. And all of this centers around shutter speed. Now we can spend all day talking about the finer points of shutter speed and how it affects this, that, and the other thing, but we're gonna distill it down as much as possible for this video. Got a camera here, and if we can get it focused, focus, there we go. That little curtain flipping back and forth is the shutter. Now this is a mechanical version of a shutter and there's also an electronic version which you find in your phones and lots of mirrorless cameras and things like that. But they do the same job. Basically it's a little mechanism that opens and closes very quickly or whatever speed you want it to open and close. And when it opens up, it allows light in. And when it closes down, it stops that light from coming into the camera. So when the shutter opens, if it's just open for a real tiny fraction of a second, that's only letting in light for such a short amount of time that that's when it allows you to freeze motion. And typically when we're talking about action sports like mountain biking, the safe zone for a, a fast shutter speed where you really want to absolutely freeze all the motion is about one one thousandth of a second. Now that's a fraction of a second. That's why you see the one slash one thousandth. So it's one thousandth of a second, if that makes any sense. But that is not what we want to do here today. We want to make things look fast by adding some motion blur to things. And so we want the shutter to open up a little bit longer than that. Actually, a fair amount longer than one thousandth of a second. And I find the sweet spot, depending on how fast the rider is and what lens you have on, the sweet spot for shutter speed to add some motion blur into things is about twentieth of a second or thirtieth of a second, somewhere around there which is what we used for this photo. And the reason why we can get that awesome motion blur is because we're opening up the shutter while we're moving like this. And so as I'm panning, no, let's not grab an actual camera. As I'm panning the camera across and that shutter is open, whatever's moving to the camera is gonna have some blur. And so if I'm going like this, that means all the background is actually the part that's moving and we're tracking the rider, we're tracking James. And so when I'm going the same speed sideways as James is, Technically, as far as the camera is concerned, James is still, for the most part. And the, everything behind him and around him, that's the part that's moving. And so you combine that with a longer shutter speed, 20th of a second, 30th, 30th of a second, and now you have these awesome streaky blurs that not only add a sense of speed and motion to the photo, but also kind of blur out the background and foreground, basically everything else but the subject that you're tracking, which in this case is James. So if you look at the first photo, yeah, there's a rider there, but there's also a lot else going on that can be pretty distracting, all of the woods and the ferns and all that kind of stuff. 
Whereas in the second photo, all that's blurred out and your, your eyes are really drawn to the rider. And of course, as you saw, James was going really, really slowly when I took that blur shot. So if he was going actual trail speed, we'd actually get a lot more motion blur in that photo. But you know, this is just a good example just to show you that the huge difference that you can make by changing a couple settings on your camera. So typically for someone who's not uh, super confident in putting their camera in full manual, the best way to do this either on your phone through a camera app or on the settings on your DSLR or mirrorless camera is to actually set it on shutter priority. And so basically what that's gonna mean is that you set the shutter speed that you want and then the camera is gonna do the rest of the work to try and get a good exposure. So it's gonna set the aperture and the ISO for you, but keep the shutter value that you chose. Okay, so we're gonna use that same technique, that blurred out technique in a really, really cool situation. And lots of World Cup photographers use this technique when the riders are going around a wall ride or something like that. And it's slowing that shutter speed down and using the camera movement for a pan shot and really blurring out everything else. But we're gonna add a little bit of a twist or actually a corner to the mix. And so we have this berm corner right here, a nice fast berm corner that James is gonna hit. And when he's coming around, when it, with my slower shutter speed, I'm gonna have it somewhere around like 30th of a second, something like that. And as he's coming around, I'm gonna pan with him and hopefully we can get some cool streaky light rays and stuff. It should look pretty awesome. Let's try it. All right, so let's try it with my, my phone's camera this time because it is a darker area of the woods, so I think we'll have a slow enough shutter speed to get some motion blur. Let's try it. So yeah, so just to go over it again, you want a slow shutter speed, which would be like 20th of a second or 30th of a second to really add some motion blur into the shot. Now keep in mind that if you held your camera still and a rider just flew past and you had a slow shutter speed, the background's gonna be nice and sharp, but the rider's gonna be blurred. So that's why you have to like pan with the rider so that the rider's sharp and the background is blurred. Does that make sense? Good. Okay, so now we're gonna go over a couple of tips to, for getting fast looking video, either with your phone or with a bigger camera and also from an action camera like a GoPro. But before we do that, I should mention that if you are interested in learning more about photography and videography and choosing the right settings and making things look as best as possible in every single situation, Beth and I created a really super in-depth photo course that transfers directly over to video. And we have that up for all of our Patreon members. If you don't know, there's a whole other community over on Patreon where people support us monthly so that we can go out and make these videos and pay for the travel costs and all those things. And in return, we give them lots of really cool stuff like extended videos, meetups, merch, and all kinds of other fun things, including a full beginner photography class and I mean a full class. It goes over absolutely everything you would need to know. Check this out. So what brought you here today? I think most people would answer to take better photographs, uh, but what is a good photograph? What's a better photograph? It's one that tells a story. One that lets you show people the way that you saw things. Now, when we think of photography as storytelling, you begin to realize very quickly that these boxes made of plastic and glass, as sophisticated as they are, cannot possibly know how to capture the shot that you want to take. So today we're gonna to show you how to take control of this camera and unlock its incredible potential because there is so much potential within these cameras. From the three essential functions that will be the springboard to every great photo you take from here on out, all the way to organizing and perfecting those photos once you put them on your computer, this class will cover everything you need to know to start capturing and sharing great photographs. So by the end of this class, you'll not only be taking better photos, but you'll be telling better stories. So you ready? And I even dress nicely for it. So if you want to check out that course and support this channel at the same time, head over to patreon.com slash the Lone Ranger. And the moment you sign up, you have full access to that and everything else that we have on our Patreon page. So yeah, go check it out. I hope you find it useful. Okay, so Beth is filming me on her very nice uh, Apple potato phone there. And so I'm right trail side here. James is up there. This is a really amazing section of trail. And there's some jumps and he's gonna come straight across here. It's pretty much a straight line all the way down. And so normally when you show up like this and you wanna get a shot of your friend flying down the trail, you'd stand next to the trail, right, typically. But if you really wanna make it look fast, 
step yourself away from the trail, either you know down this way or up that way, and zoom in with either your phone, like go into the portrait lens, or you know do the digital zoom, pinch zoom thing, or grab a lens like this. Now this looks really big and fancy, but most kit lenses do have the same range as this one does, so don't worry about having to put out the big bucks for this. But I'm gonna move back from the trail and zoom in. And so when he's rolling down the trail, I'm gonna be panning alongside him in video mode we're talking here. And we're gonna have all the trees whipping by, and it's really the things in between the rider and the camera that are gonna be showing that, that speed as he goes down the trail. So let's check it out. Okay, so for this last trail side speed video shot, um, we're gonna be using a wide angle. Before we were using a very telephoto zoomed in kind of view, and now we're gonna be using the widest angle lens you have, either on your phone or your camera. I'm using a 16 millimeter uh, lens on the wide end of this. And so basically what we're gonna be doing is we're going right trail side. And here's, here's a pretty sweet little mini step down jump, and the trail just continues forward. So if you take, um, any part of trail, as long as you have a bit of a straight line on the trail, you go right up beside it and have your camera right tucked against the trail. Make sure you're being safe, by the way. Um, right tucked up against the trail. And what you're looking for is, you want the very last part of the trail that you can see to be about the middle of your camera frame. And so the rider is gonna come flying in from one side, either the left or the right. In this case, he's coming in from the left. He's gonna come flying in and wind up in the middle of the frame. And by doing this with a really wide angle lens, it really ex accentuates the speed of the rider when they're first entering the frame. It looks awesome. So let's give it a try. James is about to head down. You also absolutely need this stance when you take this photo too. Okay, so I've done a bit of a video on this before, so you make sure you check that out. I'll post a link uh, to it right over there. But um, I'm gonna go over really, really fast how to make your GoPro action camera footage look as fast as possible. One is camera placement. The lower you can mount your camera on you or your bike, the faster things will look. And that's because when you're flying down the trail, the lower the camera is to the ground, the faster everything's gonna look moving past it. And so you'll find when if you mount the camera on top of your head, it's not gonna look that fast. Sometimes even with the World Cup racers and they were going blazingly fast, it, the if the camera's way up here and that far away from the ground, it doesn't look nearly as fast as it should. And that's why you'll find a lot of people, including myself, really prefer to mount their cameras on their chest because it's about as low as you can get it without being kind of like a silly crotch angle. So I pretty much always mount my camera right about here. It also has my bars in the frame as well, which is really important so you can kind of see what the bike is doing, what I'm doing as a rider. And so yeah, chest mount, that's the, that's the way that you're gonna make things look the fastest. The other part is, now when I set up my GoPro, I leave the shutter on automatic because the light, light is changing all the time and so if I were to try and manually set my shutter speed all the time, it'd either be too dark or too bright almost all of the time, unless the light is just stays exactly the same, which it never, never does. The camera's set on auto for shutter, which means as you get into a darker situation, you're gonna have a longer shutter speed in video and which is gonna add more motion blur. And let me show you an example of a fast shutter speed and what it looks like and a slow shutter speed. So here's a fast shutter speed. We are on full on daylight. If you look kind of underneath my, my handlebars, if you were to even freeze the frame, you can see that everything's pretty sharp. Now, as we get into the trees and the light levels drop, the shutter speeds drop as well, and you can start to see more motion blur. Have a look at the blur underneath my handlebars now. And it really gives that sense of sort of hitting warp speed, you know? So going into darker treat situations, you're gonna have more motion blur and it's gonna, gonna look a little bit faster. If you can choose a trail where there's lots of trees very, very close to the camera, having those trees fly past like that is gonna also really add a nice sense of speed because you have a bit of a reference for how fast you're going. So those are my super fast tips for how to make your GoPro footage look fast. If you wanna make it look great all the way around, make sure you check out my video for that. I'm gonna have a link for that down in the description below as well. Well, I hope that was helpful to everybody. If it was, and you got some really cool footage or photos, and if you're posting it on Instagram, make sure you tag us, hashtag the Lone Ranger. I really wanna check it out. It'd be really cool to see what you're getting with this info. And if you wanna get that full photo course that we put a ton of time and effort into, 
head on over to uh, patreon.com slash the Lone Ranger and uh, you can support us there and you'll also have immediate access to the full course forever for as little as five bucks. And that's about it for now. Get out there, film your buddies riding or film yourself riding with the GoPro and go have fun with it. And we'll see you all in a few days. Cheers, everybody. Thank you.